chapter 3 and beginning at verse 7. And the Bible reads, and to the angel of the church of uh, in Philadelphia write, these things, Philadelphia was a city in Asia. Uh, Jesus is identifying the church there in Asia. Uh, and the specific uh, region or city is Philadelphia. These things says he that is holy, he that is true, he that have the key of David, and he that openeth and no man shutteth. And shutteth and no man can owe. Don't miss your blessing. The person who's talking is the person that can open, but when he opens it, no man can. And when he shuts it, no man can. No man can open it. Uh, the Bible lets us know in verse 8, I know your works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast little strength and hast kept my word. Uh, as Jesus is giving uh, his breakdown at the Church of Philadelphia, he says, listen, I know the work you do. I know the service and labor that you do, uh, which will, uh, opens the door for our first observation. Our first observation is that there are doors in this life. Yes. For those of you taking notes, there are doors in this life. It is not me talking, it is Jesus uh, talking. He, he lets the church know. He lets the Christians know. He lets the saints know. He says, I need to, uh, you to understand something. I need you to be able to grab something. In our first observation, there are some doors that are open and there are some doors that are closed. The faster that you can be able to receive this, you won't be standing at the wrong door. It is important for you to be in tune with God because I never want to be in a place where God says, this season, this moment, this opportunity is closed. Have you ever been in a situation where you were asking God for something and you wanted to step into something and you was trying to find a way to be able to get in or maybe you was hoping that something would be open for you and what God is trying to explain to the church at Philadelphia is there are doors in life and you need to understand there are doors in life and there are some doors that are open for you. Now here's what's very important on this first observation. Observation. If God opens a door for you, then you don't need to delay. You don't need to take your time. You don't need to think that that door will always be open because the purpose of doors are to open and, and close, which means if it's an open door, then that means it's open for a season. And if God opens that door, uh, one of the worst things to do is to have an open opportunity and you were lazy and you took your time and you did not take advantage of the opportunity that God gave you. You have the opportunity to go get your education. You have the opportunity to advance. You have the opportunity to strengthen your relationship. You have the opportunity to forgive. Y'all have the opportunity. How many of you know that there is a point in, in a relationship where the door may be open, but there is a point that if you miss that opportunity, no more talking is entertained. Like you have an open door. You have, when somebody's trying to, to, to connect it, you have an open door to work that thing out. Uh, the United States government, they give you an open window. They say, hey, listen, your taxes are raggedy and you, you probably need to get this adjusted and, and you keep taking your time and now you are in the final hour staying up all night or trying to find receipts because you start to see that your, your window is closed. And so in life, there are doors and there are some doors that are open. Jesus explained this as well. When he closes a door, don't cry. When the Lord says this is over, 
that one of the most difficult things for a Christian is when something ends and we throw a tantrum, we get angry and we don't move on with life because we miss how wonderful it was to be in the door, to be in the opportunity. But I want you to know in life, every now and then, God will come and say, this season is over. This job is done. This relationship is no more. Hey, listen, there was a season, there was a season, um, I think it was about a few weeks ago, uh, about, about a few weeks ago, I decided to do what I had normally done in years past. And so uh, I remember, I remember uh, I jumped out, uh, I jumped out the car and there was some heels. And I remember just, uh, I just jumped out the car and I just started running up the, the hill. And um, brother, brother, brother Lane, my, my body said, what are you doing? I'm saying in years past, it was nothing for me. Matter of fact, I go run hours. I don't need stretch. I don't need to stretch, right? I'm built that way. I don't need to. I jumped out there and I started running and my body contracted. I'm embarrassing my, I got all these people standing out there. I'm, I'm here on the ground because <laughs> I didn't stretch. I thought old people stretch. <laughs> I, thought, I thought old people stretch. I said, oh, I don't really need to stretch, right? I'm young. I don't need to. I'm vibrant. My ligaments are good. And so I started, I started realizing, I started, I started realizing the Lord had closed that door on that season. So now I'm, I'm all in Walmart looking at rubbing, <laughs> rubbing alcohol. It's, 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 excuse me. So this one is good. It's, it's good. I'm asking questions in the pharmacy. I, I'm never in that section. Now all of a sudden I'm trying to find out which brand. So this, the witch hazel. This, so, so this is good. You do okay. So you mix it a little bit, okay, and peppermint, and that helps with the. Uh, and all of a sudden I got all of these ailments and. And you're transitioning from one season to, to another season. And he's telling the church at Philadelphia, and, and this, is, this is important on this first observation, Jesus controls the door. You don't. The Bible says there is one key. If you go back to, uh, to verse 7, uh, if, if you go back to, uh, uh, to verse 7, and to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, these things saith he that is holy, he that is true, and he that have the key. He that have the, listen, he's not sharing the keys. You don't have access. Well, I want the door to be open again because I feel like I want to have more time. Hey, listen. 30s are not the new 20s. 40s are not the new 30s. 40s are 40s, 50s are 50s, 60s are 60s. You are where you are. And when the Lord closes a door on that season, those genes no longer belong to you. That season is wrapped up. And it is God that has the key. It is Jesus that has the key. You do not have the key. And this is why it's important for you to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ because Lord where do you want me to go and where because I don't want to waste time one of the most painful things that many of us have ever experienced is that you've put your time and energy to something and there was no fruit and you said this was a waste of this was a waste of time and what, 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 what some of the things that we say don't waste my you know what's funny you don't control time you can't add to it. You can't take away. There are people who tried to leave early, woke up the next day in the hospital, and the Lord said, you ain't going nowhere. You're going to be right here. There are some people who tried two and three times, and the Lord said, mm -mm, I got stuff for you. Mm -mm, you can't leave. Now, other people may go, but no, no, no. You, gonna, you can't control. You can't control the time. 
So he says, listen, verse, back to verse 8. He says, I know that works. I have set. Look at, look, at the, look at the text. He says, I have set before you. Right? In this first observation, one of the things that I realized uh, about Jesus Christ is if God wants, if Christ wants you to step through something, you don't have to look for the door. He'll set it. We serve a good God. Because if God wants you to be blessed, you don't even have to go looking for it. The Bible says, he says, he's telling this church, I have said. Now, here's the thing about this, this observation. I'm not making you go through the door. At best, I'm going to present it to you and set it for you. But I can't make you receive it. He says, I've set before thee an open door. And I also want to let you know this on this first observation. I, I want you to, to notice this. If I set thee an open door and I've opened it for you and I told you that this is for you, stop entertaining other people who have commentary about what I'm doing with you. If I'm doing something with you and for you, it doesn't matter other people's opinions or feelings about it because what Jesus is saying is no man can change what I'm doing with you and through you. Do you know how many people have walked away from blessings and jobs and opportunities and relationships because of the opinion of other people? Some people don't want you to go through the door because the door was not set for them. There are some people who say, well, we can't go together. If we can't go together, then we're not going. And you had to look at them and say, well, I'm, I'm going. I don't, so you're not able to go. Well, I'm not, I'm not able to get off. I'm not, get off, I'm not able to get off work uh, to go on a trip. That's unfortunate. Do you know that's unfortunate? I feel for you. Well, I guess we're going to have to go to Aruba another time. Mm, no, this is a good time for me. This open opportunity. The Lord may have closed it for you. Sometimes, sometimes you're connected to people. Yes. And they don't understand what's going on and you don't understand what's going on in, in your connections because the door is open for you. It's not open for them. And you don't know how to bring everybody with you. Amen. That door is tight. It's a, it's a Some doors is a one person. It's a one person door. And you trying to bring everybody in and they don't fit. And so then there's sadness. So you know how many people, and you claim that you're loyal, you say, I'm so loyal, I'm not going to leave my people behind. But I need you to let you know, it's a personal relationship. Matter of fact, you know, you know how the world has changed? 25 years ago, 25, 35 years ago, nobody in here would have a personal cell phone. You know how the world has changed? Everybody got their own three-year-olds bringing out what you, you want to use mine? They got their own, they got their own line, right? Everybody has their own personal, to, to, and, and we hold it tight, right? Uh, have, you, have, you, have you ever had, uh, have you ever had somebody come to you and they said, uh, hey, can I use your, can I use your cell phone? <laughs> Would you? <laughs> What's, what's going on? What's, how many? I don't have. I don't have a lot of. I don't, I don't have a lot of uh, char, charge. My, my charge is going. I don't have. So you don't have a lot. So you need to. So you need to hook it up somewhere. I don't know. No, I just need to use. Your, just, just let me use your phone for just a little bit. Have you ever given your phone to somebody but you watched them at the same time? <laughs> uh uh. Don't scroll. Don't scroll. <laughs> Uh-uh, no, so, no, just hit that. No, no, that's it, that's it. Yeah, yeah. 
And they tried to walk away and make a phone call. You're like, no, 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 right here. Yeah, we all right here. We all, we all family. We all family and we all right here. <laughs> it's not a community phone. It's not a, <laughs> it's not a community phone. You need your own personal, you need your own personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And every now and then the Lord does not do for your family or friends what he's wanting to do with what he's wanting to do with you. So he says, listen, I've set, I've set uh, the unopened door. No man can, no man can shut it. Uh, Brother Williams, I got haters. Very possible. It's very possible you got haters. Hey, I got people that don't like my shine. I like people that don't like the stuff that I'm doing. I got dreams. I got aspirations. And every time that I'm trying to do this or achieve this or take care of that, uh, I always got some people pulling me down. Uh, I need you to understand um, and, 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 and it's, it's like sometimes we forget the scripture. Uh, no weapon put together will prosper. What the Lord does not say in the text is he won't stop the forming. So you'll probably see it forming. Check your spirit and just know at the completion of whatever they formed against you, you just have to know it won't prosper. You got scared because it was forming, right? You, you got scared it was forming, but don't get scared that it was forming because they're going to form it and they're going to launch it and they're going to come against you just know it won't prosper and what Jesus is telling the church in Philadelphia is they can't shut what I open if the Lord wants to bless you today do you know there's nothing we can do about it there is nothing we can do about it but also know this, if the Lord wants you to move on, and if the Lord wants you to close, if the Lord wants to close the door, and if the Lord says, okay, this season is now up, and, and he said, follow me to the next spot, don't fall so in love with where God used to bless you that you miss the next blessing at the new location. Oh, didn't he bless us over here? Didn't, didn't we have a wonderful time? And didn't we do this? And didn't we, oh, them were the, we say stuff like, them were the good old days. We were poor back then. Well, that, them were the good old days. We need to go back to the good. And, and God was really, and the family was really, and you start reminiscing over how God used to bless you at old addresses. And the Lord said, yeah, that, was, that is what it was. You're right. Some of your memories are accurate. Hey, you know that's done though, right? You know one thing that you do, uh, if, if, for those of you who bake, there's a certain point, there's a certain point, I don't care how wonderful it looks through the window and how you like it rising, and there's a certain point you say it's done. Yeah. And, you, and you know what you do? Now, now uh, in, in, in baking, uh, in baking, when somebody tries to open the door too soon and get out, the, the cook, the cook pr protects the door. Speaker. Right? The cook protects the door. And he says, listen, don't, she said, don't put your hand. Don't put your, hey, get out of my kitchen. Matter of fact, the cook will usher everybody out. Because even if you don't touch the door, if you're doing too much movement, depending on what you bet, uh, no, a little bit. All right? If you're doing too much movement, in, you gonna mess up. You shaking my hey, everybody need to, everybody need to get out. And so sometimes you're lonely, and sometimes you're by yourself and sometimes that's not because what the Lord is cooking and baking with you he's not doing with everybody else and people trying to get to you and it just seemed like the Lord is just blocking everybody and you say Lord I want some company I want some help I want some people to come in my and the Lord said no 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 you kind of need to be by yourself because I need you to rise I, I, I need you to rise and so with that and so with that but when the food is done, 
when, when the food is done, then the cook rushes to the door because if it stays in there too long, then you can you can dry that thing out, right? You can you can mess that thing up, and so when it's time to open it, and somebody says let it stay, no, 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 no. it's now time that this is open, and it the cook will open it and bring it out, and you can't stay in, and you know what? You had your greatest level of growth in that place. Oh, you was really growing. Oh, you was, I mean, when you first went in, you don't even look anything like you used to when you first came in. And I, I need you to understand something about growth. When you grow, when you grow spiritually, when you develop as a man or a woman, any amount of growth, you have to be okay with change. It can't go back. Sometimes we'll have a, a great worship service and say, hey man, that was so great. And some people learn some things, around, but just know, I need you to understand, next week won't be the same. Because hopefully you have grown, you see it differently. The preacher can't even come back the next week and preach the same sermon. You accuse them of not studying. <laughs> You'll say, hey, you wasn't, you wasn't ready. But even if he came back and preached the exact same sermon again, it won't hit you the same. Because you say, I've already received that and I have grown from that. I have applied that. I have let some of that stuff go. So when you first preached that, it pricked my heart and I repented. Preach it again. I don't need to repent because I've already made the adjustment. And then you say, okay, now what else? And so what the Lord knows with us, he did not create a stationary, he created us to grow, which is why you used to listen to this song a year and a half ago, and it was your jam. You haven't listened to it now in the last six months because you have moved on. This is why we want to listen to new things, and, and we want new clothes, and we want a new car, and a new house, and you're meant and created to grow and not stay the same and be stuck. And so, and so with that, when you grow and as the Lord's watching you and you develop, just know you're not even the same. But when it's time, I need you to understand the counter is a completely different environment than the oven. It's a completely different environment than the oven. And then on top of that, when you're, when you're where God wants you to be, uh, the Bible says it in John chapter 15. Uh, there's some pruning. He, he, matter of fact, when you grow, he says, I'm actually coming to cut you. Listen, if, if you're sweet, like, a, like if you're really sweet and where you need to be, just know the cook is coming with a knife. The cook won't come if you're not ready. The cook won't come with a knife if you're still forming. The cook won't come with a knife if you're still trying to get some stuff together. But when you are where you're supposed to be, when you're where you're supposed to be, the cook will come with a knife and set you in a new environment and then start cutting you and dividing you and start moving things and, and you'll, you'll feel like you're losing things. But actually, you're exactly where you need to be. You're, you're exactly where you need to be. Uh, and, and, so, and so with that, he says, behold, I set before thee an open door. No man can shut it. For thou hast what? Little, you have little strength, and have kept my word, and has not denied my name. Uh, second observation. First observation some doors are open, some doors are closed. Second observation Jesus is constantly opening and shutting doors, He's constantly. And the task with worship, the task with Christianity and walking with Jesus, it's important for you to be in tune with Jesus Christ so that you can know what he's doing in your life. You need to know some of you right now may be standing in front of a closed door 
and you're wasting time trying to get into something that the Lord says, that's not for you. That's, that's not for you, right? Uh, children are best at it. Uh, you, you go and you try to, some, some of y'all uh, brothers like playing basketball and going out, and then there are some who try to tell, hey, hey old man, the uh, the the G League is down down the uh, on the other court. <laughs> yeah, we we flying high over here. You need to uh, the 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 geriatric uh, the league that that league is the G League is 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 down on the on the other end. And it's funny sometimes people will tell you, hey, listen, I think you in the wrong season. Second observation: Jesus is constantly opening and shutting doors. I want us to move to verse 9 to our third observation. Third observation to the church of Philadelphia. He says, look, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan. He said, listen, you got some people around you that don't love me, but they are, they are around you. And I know that you're not with them, and I know that they are not with you. They are of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews, but they're re they say that they're followers. They're really not. They say that they're committed, uh, but they're not like you. He says, look, don't worry. I know the difference between them and you. And then he says, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before your feet um, and know that I have loved thee. Third, third observation. If you will be faithful to me and you will commit to me, number one, I'll open the right doors and I'll close the right doors. You won't have to worry. Number two, I'm constantly opening, shutting, so follow me so that you can know when to go and when to come out of a room because I'm constantly doing it, right? What was open, what was open two years ago doesn't mean that it will always stay open. So follow, that's why you follow Christ. You don't follow the door. The Lord will handle the door, but if you're, if you're with Christ, you'll always be at the right door and he's constantly doing it. The third observation, if you follow me, he says, even those haters who were forming weapons and doing things against, he says, if you stay with me long enough and be all committed, I'll make your adversaries come at your feet. And then he says, they will worship your feet and they will know that I loved you. I will make it so known I love you. I'll express my love to you. I will make my love so obvious that your haters will say, he love you. Because we tried to get at you like a bunch of different ways and he kept like, like he loves you. My third observation is that you will know that the Lord loves you by the enemies that come at you. He says, I'll make sure they come. But when they come, now listen, you're going to see the adversary and you're going to think you'll be prepared to fight. It's not a fight. He said, I'm, br I'm bringing the adversaries to you. And, and when they get to you, you think that you're going to fight when really I'm going to break them down in front of you. I got to bring them to you first. So it's going to kind of look kind of scary because it's going to kind of look like everybody's come. But when they come, they said, no, 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 no. Somebody's making us come. <laughs> And when they get to you, he says, I'll make them bow down at your feet. And when they bow down at your feet and they will all know you are loved. That's the third observation. Last observation in the lesson is yours. The last observation. The Bible says in verse 10. And because you have kept the word of my patience. You've been good. You didn't quit. I know it got hard. I know you cried. I know you wanted to throw your hands up. 
I know you were weary. I know they talked about you. I know it's been a, then he said earlier, he says, I know you didn't even have a whole lot of strength. You were not like some of the other churches. Some of the other churches were stronger than you. Y'all wasn't even that strong, but you used what strength that you had and you tried to hold on. Some of you are at the end of your rope. Some of you need a break. Some of you need some time of refreshing. He says, but you were patient and you held on and you didn't quit. He says, because you have kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. Do you know sometimes that the Lord watches to see your fight? He sees that you're struggling to see what's inside of you. And he says, because you held on, you could have let go. You could have quit. You could have said, I'm tired of this. You could have said, this isn't working. Some of us quit before we're able to see the breakthrough. Some of us quit too soon before you're able to step into the blessing. I know this week is going to look, right now, some of you thinking this next week is going to look like last week. Some of you going to think that the next month is going to be kind of similar to this month. What you don't realize is, and some of you experienced this before, in one day, the Lord can turn your whole world around. You will wait in one month, you will wake up in your house, and in the next month, you'll wake up in another state. You'll be amongst other people working in a new department, shaking hands, sitting in orientation. You, you'll be getting your new car. You you begin and you be saying you know I don't know what and then you say God is up to something and he's he's doing something and one day sometimes the silence is deceptive because you don't really hear what he's doing and he's not sending emails and updates and it just kind of looks like it'll just be the same and God will shift that whole thing around. He says. I will also, because I watched you, and I've been watching you, and I know you, and I know your works, I will also keep from you. You were supposed to experience something. Fourth and final observation. You were supposed to go through something. Now, the Lord's hour is not our hour, right? Because our hour is a straight 60, 60 minutes, okay? So you tell me I'm finna go through something for an hour, I'm putting you on the clock. The Lord's hour is different. The Lord's hour can be three years, right? Uh, he says, but you were supposed to go through an hour of temptation, which was supposed to come on the whole world. Look at the text. The, matter of fact, I wasn't just going to put you through something. I was going to put the whole world through it. But then I looked at you and I saw your faithfulness. And the whole world was supposed to suffer. Did somebody go through the pandemic and it wasn't as bad? I'm not talking about everybody. But <laughs> little man raised his hand. He said, oh, I had a blast. <laughs> I had a ball during the pandemic. I don't know. What pandemic, right? Did, did some of y'all go through the pandemic and you kept your job? Yes. I mean, a lot of people lost, but you kept, you kept yours. And even though maybe you kind of got a, a little sick, it wasn't as bad as you didn't have to be admitted. It was just a, maybe a little fee fever and you kind of mind and you you bounce back and recover did somebody go to it and you didn't I mean you had had other problems but you didn't have to worry about food or you didn't have to worry about this or you didn't have to worry about that and you just thought everything may have been fall apart and they told you that they was gonna give you an extension 
or they showed you some grace or mercy or some funds came out of nowhere. That stimulus hit, right? When that stimulus hit, yeah, right? We, we back on top, right? And what the whole world was supposed to go through, he says, I'm gonna show you specifically some mercy. He's not talking to one person. He's talking to the church. It's good to be in the church. He's talking to the church in Philadelphia. Hey, listen, your whole community about to go through something, but the people at the Church of Christ in Philadelphia, I'm showing y'all some mercy. And you won't have to go through, notice what he says, which shall come on all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. He says, listen, for some of y'all, I'm going to cancel your next storm. Number, it's my fourth observation. Sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes the Lord will say, I know you were supposed to go through this next test, but uh, it's the best way I can describe it. And then I'm done. This is the best way I can describe it. Um, when I was in uh, school, especially like uh, middle school, uh, right, high school, I don't know, middle school, um, I knew uh, we had like a quiz, our homework to do, our test to do. There was a lot of anxiety in the, in the classroom. There was a lot of anxiety. Everybody had tests homework, assignments that we need to do. So it was a lot of pressure. And so uh, every now and then, it didn't happen all the time. I'm still in the text. It didn't happen all the time. Sometimes we would be sitting there. We would be studying and trying to get our stuff together. And uh, we would hear down the hallway like this like this squeaking, this squeaking. If they didn't oil it, it was, it was a squeaking. <laughs> and they would hit that corner, and what it and what it would be, it would it would be this big old box. Some of you wouldn't recognize it. They call it a TV. It would be this big old box that was strapped to a cart, right? <laughs> Some of you don't know what that means, but what that meant for us. Can you see the hope in a child's? Wait a minute. And when that TV would roll in the classroom and roll up into the front, we would all look at each other. Because what we knew today, it don't happen all the time, but what we knew today is whatever work we were about to do has now been, and every now and then, the Lord will see your labor and the Lord will see your work. And if you would just quiet your fears and the noise, you could hear some, some spiritual squeaking down the hallway. And the Lord will roll in that television. <laughs> <laughs> and you would say, oh, we watching a, we watching a movie today. <laughs> you put your backpack up, everybody would lay back, because today about to be a, a good day. And I'm glad that I serve a Lord that says, I know you're tired, and I know what you're going through. And because you fought in this season, I'll give you rest in the in the next season. Trouble don't last. Trouble don't last always. If you're here this morning, and maybe, Lord, I don't know what you're doing. Lord, I've been trying to do this, and Lord, I've been trying to do that, and Lord, I've been trying to go here, and Lord, I've been trying to do that. Can I give you some advice? Stop trying to just go a whole bunch of places to see if God is going to open it for you. Check with the Lord first. Sometimes we waste time diving into stuff, and when it don't work out, we say, oh, well, I guess the Lord didn't want me to do that. And you wasted all that time. Hey, before you go anywhere, do anything, or step into anything, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Ask God and pursue God on which way, which direction that you should take. 
And when you seek the Lord, you'll be able to tell other people. Somebody says, hey, hey, I, I'm going this way. And you will say, no, that door is open for you. That door ain't open for me. Oh, that will be, that's wisdom speaking. When you know what God is doing for you and what God is doing for your family and what God is doing for your career, you would say, no, I think God is calling me to go in this way. Well, 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 I want you to come with me. If I come with you, I'm going to be cursed because I'm going to be outside of assignment. I'm going to be outside of what God is doing for me. And I just want to be where God wants me to be because if I'm where God wants me to be, I'm in the right position to receive my next blessing. And if I have opposition and things coming at me, I serve such a good God that if he sees my faithfulness, he'll start canceling some tests in the future. Some of y'all were supposed to go through some things and God looked at your heart and said, no, nah, we'll push that back. We'll, we'll move that to the side. Have you ever prayed to the Lord? Lord, can you just give me a minute? Sometimes you go after storm after storm and trial after trial and this and after this. And sometimes the Lord will just give you a break and say, just, just go to sleep. Just, just get some, like Elijah in the wilderness. Just, just get some rest. We'll talk about your next assignment maybe a little bit later. But just, just be able to get some rest. If you lack wisdom, the Bible says ask and he'll give it liberally. If you want to know which way to go, this is a season as we stand in the middle of this year, this is a good season for you to kind of maybe pause and stop and ask the Lord, am I at the right door? Am I doing what you asked me to do? And Lord, these, these are some decisions and thoughts that I've had about where I want to go. Lord, lead me lest I stray. Lord, lead me lest I stray. Say the Lord.